The purchases journal looks something like this, with date, supplier, posting reference, and whenever you buy an account, they just have to record the number once, and it will represent a debit to the inventory, increasing it, and a credit to accounts payable, increasing it. For the cash payments journal, I'll also put that T in the middle so you can see that. These debits to accounts payable will reduce accounts payable, and the credits to purchases discounts, which we haven't talked about, would increase the purchases discounts account. In summary, subsidiary ledgers help track individual balances for each individual customer, for each individual supplier, for each individual inventory account. We have subsidiary accounts for any account for which we want to track more detail. They help improve internal control because there are monthly reconciliations of the subsidiary ledgers to the general ledger control account. For example, receivables are reconciled on a monthly basis. Special journals save time because in some cases you can write that number only one time and it represents both a debit and a credit. In addition, you can divide labor. You can put one person in charge of the sales journal, another person in charge of the purchases journal, and it helps to divide labor. The detail of the special journals are posted to the subledgers on a daily basis, whereas the total is posted to the general ledger on a monthly basis. I hope that gives you a better perspective on subsidiary ledgers and special journals. Wish you all the best on the quiz.